Hey guys, welcome back to Tractors, Trails, and Living Free. And uh, we're going to do a part one of a new project we're going to do here to kind of take care of a, a nuisance that's been going on here at our uh, at our home for years now. And uh, the, the, the short story of what's going on is you see our sidewalk right here in front of our house. Um, basically, when we get heavy rains, what happens is all the water just tends to wash down our yard because we have like a negative grade towards the house here. And what ends up happening, because it's kind of a, a low spot here, is these bottom four, four to five panels usually just get completely submerged in water. So uh, the goal of the project today is we're going to try to, um, we're going to do a long-term drainage project here. But what we're going to do today for part one is we are going to, um, we're going to use the backhoe on the Massey. And we're going to try to dig a trench about four to five feet away from our steps here and just kind of run it down through here. This is kind of the low spot, but we want to get it to drain out to, uh, to a lower spot so it doesn't want to try to accumulate here. So what we're going to do is then we are going to try to trench across our driveway here. Um, and then just get to this lower area here where it kind of goes downhill kind of quick here. And we should be able to get it to daylight um, without going too too much farther than maybe six or eight feet past the driveway. Um, we might also dig a secondary trench and it would be here along the driveway because what we have here, and this also contributes to what's going on there at the sidewalk, is we have wet spots like puddles around in this area because it's kind of a low area. And it kind of also gathers the water from here and then funnels it right towards that same sidewalk area that our overall grade does. So what the goal is, is to dig this trench here as a primary, and then we'll see how we're doing, and we might dig another trench through here. Um, we're just going to go ba basically the size of the Massey bucket, which is a 12-inch bucket. Um, I usually dig with the teeth on, but I'm actually thinking about maybe taking the teeth off on this one to try to, try to get more of a, a smoother trench and maybe not, you know, make such a mess of everything and uh, have to go down deeper than I need to. So, um, so yeah, that's basically how we're, uh, how I'm going to approach this project and uh, watch till the end because I need to ask for some advice about how we're going to handle the, uh, the, the trench from there as far as uh, what we do as far as our fill and our filtration and such. So watch to the end, and if you have any, uh, any advice on that, you can let me know. So let's we'll go ahead and let's get to it. Like I said, I kind of want to take the teeth off. You want to go ahead and check this out. So basically these teeth on the backhoe bucket, there's just two bolts holding them on there. Let's we'll see if we have a... Yeah, looks like we've got a nut on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, grab a wrench and a socket and see if we can just zip these off really fast. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, guys. So I went ahead and... Uh, Kind of checked my sockets on here. It looks like um, each of these teeth is held on by two uh, 19 millimeter socket or bolts or, uh, or close to 19 millimeters. So we're just going to go ahead and try to get these off and hopefully it won't take us too much time here. So let's get on it. Cool. bad. That wasn't as bad as it looked. <laughs> All right. Now I'll try to make this go a little faster. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grab my, uh, Grab my uh, impact driver, put on our half inch extension, and go ahead and try to zip these out. All right, guys, so now we are 
We're gonna tool it up with our handy dandy impact driver. Now we're gonna make stuff happen here. And we might have been able to use uh, use this from the start, but I didn't know how tight these were gonna be on here. Figured uh, being backhoe teeth, they were probably torqued on there pretty good. So that's what I was thinking. All right, so make sure we got all, all six of these. It looks to me like all these teeth are pretty symmetrical. They just have drilled holes at angles here to kind of fool you. And like I said, the goal here is to try to dig a smoother trench. Like when we did the, uh, the culver project in the woods there, uh, there were two things we did that are different than what we're gonna do now. And they probably made us have a little bit less of a clean result. And one was, uh, having the teeth on here and two was uh we were digging the uh the trench from each side now we're just going to straddle it because we're just going to try to dig a trench the size of the bucket by itself so teeth are off let's go ahead and uh get our seat swiveled around see how this goes And I'm going to try to do a long reach here, long reach here, and try to try to make as I can get more uh, more ditch done for uh, for a move. So we're kind of having to kind of baby it here, trying to get it going. We want to go kind of shallow here and lift it up, I guess, as I'm uh, bringing the stick in. Because if, if it starts going too deep, it tries to pull the uh, pull the whole machine, of course. But I almost have to do it in like two, uh, two tiers. There we go. Trying to keep a nice, uh, nice straight trench here, I guess. 
Every time it tries to drag the back hoe, I'm like bringing the uh, bringing the boom up. Push this uh, again. Push my spoil away here. Out there deep. There we go. That's a nice, healthy bucket. But um, I like always. It's like I just don't use the backhoe a lot to get like really proficient at it. I want to, but. Now I'm just trying to empty the bucket out. Okay. And I'm going to try to engage the flow here. Try to clean this out as a flat hole. And see how that worked really nice there. I mean, I'll probably uh, talk to you about some pros and cons about this uh, backhoe. Because there are some of both, to be honest. But uh, one thing i got to admit I really like is the, uh, the flow feature here. It really allows an amateur like me to get a nice bottom on my hole, actually. Check the bucket out. That doesn't look too bad. All right, time to reposition again. Yeah, thankfully we're on uh, our new time uh, change here, but the problem now is that we are running out of daylight here. Yeah, that that didn't seem to give a uh, that gravel didn't seem to give the backhoe any problem at all. So. So I'm, just, I'm reaching out so far there, I'm basically just having to scrape it down a couple inches at a time. Well, I know no one who's watching this right now would 
would uh, would think I'm an expert for sure. And they're right. I'm not. I'm not, but. There we go. Let's see what we got. Alright, I think I can reach everything in the hole now, so. Let's try this here. Take another layer out here. I almost wonder if one of those uh, one of those trenching buckets wouldn't be a little bit more effective here. Looks like getting all that, but um, I kind of really feel like backfilling this is going to be where the John Deere 430 uh, plow blade is going to shine here. I think I'm going to take one more scoop here, and I'm going to try to reposition the backhoe with the uh, the uh, backhoe arm itself again. All right. Now I'm going to try to try to push away again. So Is that playing again here? I tell you, the pros make it look easy, don't they? All right. Well, I think that's about going to do it. I think we pretty much ran ourselves to... Uh, the daylight here maybe let's go ahead and wrap this show up all right guys so yeah i think so we're, we're the way the grade runs down here on the side of the driveway i think we aside from a little fine tuning with a shovel i think uh we kind of got our basic ditch dug here. Um, so just to let you know what the plans is. So next time what we'll probably be doing is we'll probably go ahead and grab our, uh, our rotating laser, try to establish a good drop here and stuff. And then we're probably going to put some, um, some river rock in here. Cause I know that's better for drainage than like crushed stone. And um, so here's what I was talking about earlier when I was 
kind of soliciting some uh, some opinions of you guys who who maybe know a little bit better about this. So my thoughts were, I was going to put gravel in there and put in a, I think I was going to put in a, a tile with a sock on it, a four inch tile with a sock on it, um, perforated. And, uh, but the only thing I wasn't sure about was like, I mean, the proper way to do it. You think I should run some like geotextile, like on the bottom of the trench and the, and the sides, then put gravel, a gravel bed, then the tile, and then more gravel and then more fabric. Should I not use any fabric or should I not use any on the top before I put like some sod and some of this dirt back on top of it to try to make it look decent? So if any of you guys really know what you're doing on this stuff, um, as far as a uh, good way to do drainage for this, to make it last a long time, not get plugged up and, and uh, just be a real good project that really keeps the water away. Um, feel free to just drop your, uh, drop your comments in the comment section, kind of, Give me a little of those pro tips that I, I need. I'm definitely an amateur on this backhoe. Um, the problem is every time I, I use it, I kind of remember some things, pick up some things as far as like good ways to use it and stuff. And then uh, I don't use it very often. So when I do use it, I've kind of forgotten a lot of what I was uh, working with. But um, it did the job. I mean, I don't know if, well, we got 10, 20, 30, maybe, I don't know, maybe 35 feet or so here of a 12 inch trench i guess it looks good for the most part um a couple things i want to say about the backhoe it does the job i mean i'm happy with this machine if there were things i wish it had i wish it had a dual seat on it so you didn't need to swap that around um i one thing i i, I love about this is that that float for the backhoe like I said, a lot of them have it for the loader, but this one has it for the backhoe. It really does kind of kind of make it make an amateur like me look look a little bit better than uh, than I am. That's probably still not too good, but uh, but it helps me do the job when you don't really have a lot of expertise with backhoes. Um, so yeah, so uh, we'll probably catch you back in the next time. Um, this is going to be a multi part um, well, multi part series here because. Uh, Obviously, this takes a little bit longer than uh, than you think with a backhoe. One thing I want to say, these backhoes on these tractors, they're not excavators. It's probably not the best tool for the job. But for someone like me who just has property and needs to do maintenance, it's a really good option. Um, it's an expensive good option, but um, you just have to kind of weigh it yourself whether you would want to rent an excavator for this and kind of have it work a little bit more efficiently or just have something that you can take your time on for someone like me who uh, doesn't have a lot of expertise to get the job done super fast. So I kind of like being able to work at my own speed and kind of learn on it. So uh, once again, thank you for watching. Um, sorry, it's been a little bit of time since our last video. We're definitely planning on getting some more going here now that it's getting warmer. And um, as always, like this video. If you if you think it was worth what we were worth seeing what we were doing, um, share it around and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, other than that, I want to thank you all for watching and thank you all for sticking with us and, uh, we'll catch you next time on tractors, trails and living free.